With over 30,000 security incidences analyzed, the 2024 Data Breach Investigation Report, or DBIR, is one of the most widely respected and referenced reports in the cybersecurity industry. This report analyzed data contributed by law enforcement agencies, cybersecurity vendors, and forensic teams to offer the most comprehensive and data-driven view of the global threat landscape. In this video, we're gonna analyze this 100-page report and go through the most important trends and lessons learned from over 10,000 confirmed breaches over the last year. I've broken down this video into six sections, so feel free to jump directly into the timestamp indicated on the screen if you wanna skip along. The only thing I ask is that you give us a quick like down below and subscribe if you haven't done so already to see more content like this. Let's first start by taking a look at the Ways In enumeration chart as represented by figure six from the DBIR report. This chart refers to the various methods attackers are using to gain initial access to a system or network during a breach. Here we can see that these three categories make up the overwhelming majority, and we can also see how they have trended over the last four years. Credentials is defined as breaches where attackers gain unauthorized access by using stolen or weak credentials, such as username and passwords from a previous breach. The phishing category includes social engineering attacks and remained fairly stable compared to last year, remaining still one of the most common and effective methods for gaining unauthorized access into a network. Vulnerability exploits saw the most significant increase compared to last year, with a 180% surge overall. This marked the first time that vulnerability exploits caught up to phishing, as many popular vulnerabilities over the last 12 years contribute to this substantial rise including the Move It vulnerability, which the report calls out specifically. In previous years, we would have also seen a category for human error, but this year the DBIR team created a dedicated section which we'll review later. Let's further break down these trends to take a look at what's making up the bulk of these respective categories. In the credentials category, we can see that nearly half of the vectors involved web applications. And while we normally think of web applications as being an easy target of external exploit attempts, this is actually a good reminder that unauthorized access via stolen credentials is still the easiest and most prevalent way that attackers are actually making it through the door. Phishing continues to be a dominant vector for attacks, and email is still the most common method used to gain that unauthorized access. If there was any bright side to this phishing year trends from this year's report, it's that overall report rate from cybersecurity awareness trainings increased to 20%. This means that in the data contributed by partners, over 20% of users reported phishing in their simulations, and another 11% of the users who clicked on an email also reported it, indicating overall that users are becoming more aware of phishing attempts and are reporting them appropriately. The same report stated that the median time to click a malicious link was only 21 seconds. It took an additional 28 seconds for the person to enter in their data. This means that the total median time for a user to fall victim to a phishing email is less than 60 seconds. As mentioned previously, exploitation of vulnerabilities as a means to gain entry into the network increased 180% year over year. This increase was largely attributed to three categories, web applications, desktop sharing software, and VPNs. The last couple of years have not been good to VPN vendors, as a number of vulnerabilities in the underlying protocol has made firewall and VPN concentrators susceptible to unauthorized access. However, this data suggests that it's still significantly safer to put as many web applications behind VPNs than it would be to leave them exposed externally. Of course, the same is true about desktop sharing software in general. Now, given the rise of vulnerability and exploitation techniques against affected VPN vendors and software, such as the high-profile vulnerabilities in SSL VPN solutions, the security industry is shifting towards alternative approaches like zero-trust network access, which you can see a previous video that we have already covered. However, one major caveat to ZTNA is that there is no industry standard for what ZTNA actually is made up of or the technology involved meaning the so-called ZTNA vendors may still rely on SSL with the same vulnerabilities as traditional VPN solutions. Now, up till now, we've been looking at how attackers are getting through the door of our networks for their initial access. But a big missing piece, as mentioned earlier, is the human element, which traditionally has always been the weakest link in our defenses. This year was no different. A whopping 68% of all breaches involved the human element. The DBR defines a human element as an incident where human actions directly contributed to a security breach. 
This actually covers a wide range of actions, such as human error, social engineering attacks like phishing or pretexting, and privilege misuse. The human element is, however, specifically defined to exclude cases of malicious privilege misuse to provide a clear focus on areas that can be addressed through security awareness training. This data point is a stark reminder of the importance of both cybersecurity awareness training and wrapping technical safeguards like multi-factor authentication, DLP, and strong access controls around human behavior to reduce the associated risk. This last major trend from the report this year included a measurement from the DBIR team that tracks supply chain correlation with breaches over time. This category is represented in Figure 9, which covers breaches that are initiated through vulnerabilities or attacks related to third-party suppliers, partners, or service providers. Now, from this figure, we can see the supply chain attacks have been trending upwards for the last few years, but most notably the biggest increase year over year. When we think about supply chain attacks, we don't normally consider everyday software that we use to be included as part of this category. But exploitation of vulnerabilities is counted in this metric as well, which means that major breaches like Move It Vulnerability discovered in 2023 are counted as part of this figure. So what kind of attacks were used in these supply chain attacks? Well, as we would expect, the usual culprits were at the top of the list. Exploitation of vulnerabilities was number one, followed by backdoors, and perhaps most surprisingly, extortion. Extortion attacks are typically associated with ransomware. But instead of encrypting the data and holding it hostage, the attackers are threatening to release the data. Perhaps the biggest takeaway from the risk associated with supply chain attacks is a need to vet third-party vendors and ensure that their security practices are sound. Supply chain risk can be mitigated by selecting vendors with strong security track records, implementing risk management processes, and using frameworks like SBOMs or Software Bill of Materials to maintain transparency and identify vulnerabilities in software components. Now that we've covered these key trends, let's take a look at some practical steps organizations can take to strengthen its defenses based on data from the DBIR report. Let's start off with phishing. The DBIR states that phishing was involved in 68% of breaches that had a human element, with a median time to fall for users from a phishing email under 60 seconds. This data point highlights the importance of robust email filtering, multi-factor authentication, and regular phishing simulation to improve awareness and reduce exposure. Credential protection. The DBIR states that nearly half of credential breaches were due to unauthorized access via stolen credentials, with web applications being the most common. This highlights the importance of using strengthened password policies, auditing permissions, and using multi-factor authentication again to significantly reduce the risk of unauthorized access through compromised credentials. Another thing the DBIR states is that exploitation of vulnerabilities as a path to breaches increased by 180%, particularly affecting VPNs and desktop sharing software. A zero trust network access or ZTNA model can reduce the reliance on vulnerable VPNs by enforcing least privileged access, helping to protect against vulnerability exploitation. Again, make sure that the underlying technology that a ZTNA vendor uses is not also relying on vulnerable software such as old versions of SSL. We also saw the supply chain breaches accounted for about 15% of all overall breaches, accounting for a 68% increase year over year, which was largely due to third-party vulnerabilities. This again highlights the importance of vetting third-party vendors, using tools like SBOM, and implementing third-party risk management processes which could be essential to reducing the growing risk with supply chain. To read the full report, please take a look at the link posted in the description. The DBIR is released yearly in a highly recommended read for every security and IT professional. As always, I really appreciate everyone supporting the channel throughout the years, and especially as we've recently passed 1 million total views. This couldn't be possible without you and your support, so thank you so much for being a part of this. For now, this wraps up another video from the CISO perspective, but we have much more on the way. Thanks for watching.